Okay, look at this nice and neat organized farm, you guys. Isn't this awesome? I love it. Fantastic. Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and we are coming back, uh, starting this episode with an end-of-the-month update for July. Uh, this has been an incredibly busy month um, with working contracts, and um, we've made quite a bit of money. But we also had to borrow some more money to get everything done, so we're going to have to get that squared away. I just finished turning in the rest of the silage bales to finish up the hay contract, so everything that's on my trailer and that you see in the field is what's left over for the silage. Uh, we did a bunch of harvesting contracts. Uh, we did some canola and a bunch of wheat and oats. And as a result of that, I got about a hundred straw bales. So we got a, a massive amount of straw bales uh, doing all that. And um, we got a total of about six hay bales of the large hay bales from the hay contracts that wanted hay instead of silage. And let's see, what else? We did a bunch of cultivating contracts, so made quite a bit of money on that uh, with our new cultivator, which is great. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else in particular to talk about uh, as far as, you know, the contracts go. So I, I did have that same weird issue where if um, I, I, you know, I worked... I did this for many hours yesterday in real life, and I finally had to quit. And I had to go eat dinner and go to bed because it was getting so late. And so, but I hadn't fully picked up the straw off of the wheat fields that I had harvested. So when I logged back in the next day, um, the game had. Well, what would happen is it would, it would switch the swap the fields over to cultivated and not give me credit for the quests. So I had to log back in three separate times and then quickly go into the quests and and then turn them in you know to get paid for them which I eventually was able to do but then it also made a bunch of the straw disappear that I had already you know was in the process of bailing so I estimated how many bales that I you know would have otherwise gotten and and just gave those to myself with the admin tool um, so yeah it came out to around a hundred bales of straw which is huge I mean our our barn is it's not completely full, but it's it's in good shape, man. We'll put it that way. Good shape. So, and let's see. I don't think I did any other types of contracts. There weren't any fertilizing or sowing or anything like that in July. And yeah, that's but that's pretty much it. I didn't bother saving the grain. You just don't get that much of it. It's more useful, you know, for saving for your chickens. But we have so much barley now that I just went ahead and sold it, even though this is the worst time of year to, to sell just about anything. <laughs> July's a terrible month for selling. But uh, otherwise, you know, we would have had to take the small amount that we got and s store it in the train station and pay rental on that just to make like $2,000 when the price is good kind of thing. It just wasn't worth it to me to do that. I, I would have kept it more for, like I said, the purposes of feeding the chickens, but we don't. We're in such good shape right now with that that I just don't want to mess with it. Okay, so anyway, I think all of the silage from our fields are probably yeah, those are ready too. So I'm gonna to have to get those loaded up. I'll do that off camera though. It's gonna take a long time. Um, so let's throw these bales in, and then we'll go back to field 71, pick up the remaining bales, and then turn that uh, contract in and see where we end up with our money this is gonna you know we're probably gonna fill this silage storage thing back up again almost completely full by the end of the year and boy are we gonna make some cash man off of that I mean we <laughs> we got six full stacks off of our hay uh, our own fields that's just amazing um, you know plus I'm getting about one and a half to two um, ish for each um, computer farmer hay cutting you know too it depends uh, we don't get quite as much on the first hay cutting but we tend it tends to get better get better in terms of the yield as the year you know grows later I, don't, I haven't actually confirmed that for sure but it kind of seems that way anyway okay yeah so let's go get the rest of these bales oh where am I going I need to go this way Totally 
here yapping at you guys and not paying attention to where I'm going. Yeah, we need to go this way. Oh, I I found a couple more um, collectibles too. I actually found one of them a long time ago, and I keep forgetting to show you guys where it's at. Let's grab that real quick while I'm thinking about it. If you don't want to know where these are, then yeah, don't watch the next five minutes or so of the video. <laughs> uh, but anyway, one of them I think was somewhere around in here, and I I, I literally found this a long time ago and I just keep forgetting to show you guys where it's at um, it's, I think it's somewhere over here anyway uh, maybe it's further down than this actually or it could be over here Where am I at? I'm getting all turned around here. Hmm. Was it further down this way? It's been such a long time, like I said, I don't even remember exactly. Oh, here we go. Yeah, right here. Okay. So let's get... Whoops. All right. I'm having trouble getting to it here. All right, you found a cedar. There are four more cedars to be found. Awesome. Okay, and then I'll show you where the other one is. So if any of you are averting your eyes, keep averting them for just a little bit longer. Some people like to know where these things are and some don't, you know. If I was, wa if I was watching me do this and I didn't know where they were, I wouldn't want to know where they were. I'd want to find them myself. So I would be averting my eyes right now <laughs> if it was me. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's go towards... Well, here, I'm not going to say anything. Just follow me. <laughs> we're going to go this way, and then we're going to go that way, and then we're going to go up the hill and down the hill and around the corner and under the bridge and over the bridge and... Yeah. Right. Okay, here is the other one that I, I just found this one like yesterday. You found a water trailer. There are four more water trailers to be found. Nice. Okay, so that's two more collectibles that we can add to our our statistics. I'm, I haven't actively looked for these since that one episode that we did a long, long time ago where I was actively looking for them. I just, you know, I, I stumble across them and every once in a while and I figured, oh, there they are. I'll wait and show, show everybody on camera that wants to see it. Okay, so we are back now at field 71. And we're going to pick up the rest of these bales. So yeah, we're not we're actually only gonna get a trailer load and maybe a fourth this time. But still, I mean this is essentially free silage. And we store it and wait till the price is at its max and then we make a whole crap ton of money off of it. Okay, so that takes care of the contract bales. Uh, like I said, I will pick up these six stacks of bales off camera. And get them in the stores before the next episode. I'll do that later, though. Um, so let's go back to the yard. And I did go ahead and purchase that lizard rake, that, that little front rake. And, man, I'll tell you what, it is so nice. It just makes bailing a breeze. Um really really enjoy enjoy that rake so and I got the bigger one too rather than the smaller one and it seems to work a little bit better than the smaller one too okay let's just uh, well here we might as well park this trailer and then we'll take a look at our money oh wait I gotta get I gotta get that stupid uh, 
Uh, which I'm gonna call it tether in there first. It's not a stupid tether. It's a nice tether. Okay, you could definitely move something like this by hand in real life. Maybe not pick it up, but you could easily push it or pull it. So I'm just gonna do that right now. Okay, I think that's in place. Whoops. Just barreled right into my trailer there. Knocked a couple teeth out. <laughs> okay. That's good enough. I know it's not all the way back in there, but it'll have to do. It'll have to do, man. Okay, so let's see where we are. There's the rake right there that I bought. I think it was like $25,000 or something like that. Let's look at that. Windrowers. Oh, 32,000, 325 in fact. Okay, yep, so we purchased that. Um, all right, now let's look at our money. We'll turn this off. Let's see what we're doing here. So if we go, oh yeah, we need to turn this guy into. There's another $25,000 right there. I'm not going to do these harvesting contracts. And as you can see, there's, um, oh. oh, we just had a couple cultivating come back up. You know, I'll probably do those. I mean, they're so easy to do. And I have, you know, I have my own equipment for it. So yeah, I'll, I'll do this, but I'll do them later. Just, just know that we're going to add another $1,800 or so onto the top of everything else that's happening. Okay, so let's look at the finances. Um, so that thirty-two-five, of course, is from buying the the rake. Uh, we spent eighteen thousand dollars in repairs because we we're just using our stuff so much. Um, I didn't borrow any of the farmers' equipment for the hay. I really should do that for the biggest fields. It's it's worth doing um, because you know they don't. They don't deduct too much money off of that, and I spend more money repairing my own equipment um, if I use it. So I really need to do that, but sometimes I just forget to or whatever. Uh, mysterious $45 for production costs there. Um, well, actually, you know what? We're not actually at the end of July, are we? This is still July 1. Oh, right. Um, okay, well, let's just, let's just see where we're at. So I sold just a, a small bit of bales from the contracts. We spent that much in fuel, $90. Um, we made $14,718 from harvest income from just the grain and canola that we sold. And we made $164,000, 431 or 341 uh, from contract income, which is really good. That's what we grossed, of course. Paid workers, 15000 This miscellaneous is... What is that miscellaneous? I don't know what that's from. I can't hmm, I can't remember what this is for. Hmm. Um, and then I had to, like I said, I had to borrow a little bit more money early on because I was like flat broke and I needed to pay the workers. So so first thing we gotta do is pay the bank off. So we owe the bank seventy thousand dollars. Um, so let's do that now. And I want to pay them off right now, so I'm not paying interest for the next two days. Okay, so that leaves us with a balance now of fifty three thousand seven hundred and ninety eight dollars. Okay, so let's take a look at, and remember, um, you know, we purchased, we really, if you think about it, we purchased that huge cultivator and that rake. So if we had not have done that, we would have another seventy or $80,000 on top of this. Um, so that's really kind of the money that we actually, you know, have. Um, okay, so anyway, let's go. Let's go to animals. Chickens are good. Cows are fine for now. And let's look at the greenhouses. So this one is now we we now have to switch this over. Oh no, I guess I already did switch it over to manure. Okay, so everything is switched over to manure. All the greenhouses are almost completely chocked full with manure. We're no longer using solid fertilizer. And life is good. Uh, we are gonna. I am gonna have to replenish the seeds in here, but we could probably get away with waiting until um, August to do that. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait till August to do that. All right. Let's see here. Um, what else do we want to look at? Oh yeah. Let's look at the what we currently have in storage. 
So 16,000 um, eggs, 13,000 almost butter, 5,000 almost cheese, 160, almost 170,000 lettuce, we'll say 40,000 tomatoes, and 77, 5,000 uh, on the strawberries. So looking good there, plus all the hay that we have uh, in storage. In fact, um, this should show us that. So, yeah, we have... Now, remember, this doesn't count what's sitting on the ground that I haven't put in the, uh, you know, the the barn or the storage thing yet. So in storage, we have 590,000 liters of silage. Uh, we have 471,000 and change liters of hay and 1.2 million <laughs> of straw. That's amazing. Uh, what else? This is, yeah, this is the manure and the slurry and stuff, so forth that we're building up. All right, you guys. Now, I got to show you something. I, I, I got to show you something. I'm tempted again. I am seriously, seriously tempted again. Look it, at what's for sale. A T9 New Holland. What's this over here? Oh, that's just a forestry a forwarder. Um, a T9 New Holland. Articulating axle. If it was maxed out, it would have almost 700 horsepower, 692. Um, but in order for me to buy this now, I would have to take a significant loan out to get it. Oh man, it's just a beautiful, beautiful tractor. But again, I can't really justify this at this point in time. And here's why, because I have the man, man truck and the man truck can pretty much do all of the heavy work, uh, which is, is essentially pulling that ginormous cultivator. And so it's, I just, I can't justify getting this right now. Um, even though I really, really would like to do so. But look at that beautiful tractor, man. It's just amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't justify it. Can I afford it? Yeah, I can in the long run, but I just, I don't know. I would really like to, but it's more of a, a want and not a need at this point, I think. I mean, we will eventually, we are eventually going to get a third tractor and preferably a big one um, because, you know, the more tractors we have, the more work that we can can get done. But again, you know, this is really for almost almost all intents and purposes, a, a third tractor and a 500 horse one at that, which we've already talked about. So I'm going to let that one go as much as <laughs> as much as it sucks. I think it's the right move for us right here now. I mean, I was tempted. I really was thinking I was thinking, man. How can I justify getting that tractor? And I couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't justify getting it. So anyway, uh, but the good news is we are out of debt now. Um, and we have $53,000 on top of that. And um, so we really need to get a shed going over here. And I think that's what exactly what we're going to do. Um, so let's, um, yeah, why don't we, why don't we get, why don't we do that and then... We'll get everything situated. There's no reason not to do it right now that I can think of. Okay, so I need to get all this stuff moved out of the way first. So let me get that done, then I'll bring you back. We'll put a new shed in and then start, you know, to put our stuff away and get our farm a little, little more organized than what it currently is. Okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, we are back and I have all the stuff moved out of the way. Spent a little bit of time trying to decide exactly what I wanted to do for storage and I think I have figured out figured that out so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the build menu and we're going to put up two of these easy sheds here I kind of wanted to do this one but it's so doggone big um, there there's just no room for it over in this yard here I, I wanted it I was thinking about putting this one here but it's <laughs> it isn't gonna work um, the only place I really could put this, if I did put it anywhere, was is maybe right over here. I don't want to put it over here because I have plans, you know, future plans for productions in that area. Um, so I could put it here, maybe like right about in this general vicinity, because um, you know, we have this room here, and I, I want to eventually kind of get a, start getting away from the weird irregular fields because it's just a pain in the butt to um you know to harvest that sort of thing 
and have you know all of our fields nice rectangles and squares and that sort of thing and so that that would open up this area here for us to put more buildings and stuff in the future um, and that's what we're gonna do over here too so but I don't I don't like the idea of the shed being not in the you know the main yard here first of all and secondly uh, I don't know if now is the right time to to remove this hay because this is making us money right now so so I don't think we're gonna do that I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this easy shed here and we're gonna flip it around this way and we're gonna just put it in this spot here so what I want to do is basically I just want to bump it right up against the existing shed then pull it out so it's not colliding and then go as far that way as we can go with it so I think right about there is what we want to do now let me turn this way I don't want it sticking out past this shed here either so we're basically looking at about right there I think because we can't go back any further this way so yeah let's do it okay it's done now the other thing I'd like to well actually hold on before we do that and we could hold it out a little bit here let's sell it real quick while we get the full money back okay let's try that again um, but I want it actually want it right about there Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna build another one of these, and the other one I want over by the cow barn, and we're gonna store our equipment that we use to take care of our animals uh, in here. All right, and the spot we're gonna put this is gonna be right here. Um, I have. Well, hmm. The other thing we could do is we could. We could instead put this over here. That would line it up with the cow barn. I think it would look better over here. Okay, hold on. I gotta I have to think about something here for a second. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, <laughs> it's like really getting dark too. Um, but I think I figured out what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, this shed here. And the reason, the thing that I was trying to figure out, uh, just as an FYI, was I'm planning on moving the chicken coop, um, this chicken coop over here and put it, and potentially put a second chicken coop in later on down the road. Um, and I wanted to make sure there was, and I was planning on putting them in this area. So I just wanted to make sure I was going to have room to do that. And I think I will. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put this one here and I'm going to actually, okay, we can't go any further to the right there because of the manure thingy. Um, and I can push it back this way. But I wonder if that's going to cause a problem with the chickens. Uh, so I think I'm going to pull it back out this way a little bit. And let's put it right there. Okay. It's a done deal. <laughs> We're going to have to do a little bit of landscaping action here. Um, but my goodness, you know what? Uh, let's sleep and come back in the morning and finish this out because, yeah, it's, it's just too dark. So I will see you tomorrow morning. Okay, so we have a nice, bright, sunny July 2nd morning. And um, I want to do something about this here. But I have to be careful of, you know, our money. Whoops. And, uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, all that's left is to do some landscaping to, to kind of fix things up a little bit. I just hope it doesn't cost us an arm and a leg to do it. So first of all let's see if we can raise this up now the idea here with the crick is culverts <laughs> we're just gonna have to assume we're putting culverts in as we you know cover up the the crick running through here um so i don't know i there are some 
there there's some mods that allow you to do bridges but i don't think there's any bridges in the in the base game as far as i know uh, but what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to raise up the ground and again i just have to watch my money because this can get really expensive so let's increase the size of our our thingy here and raise this up and like I said we'll just assume that we have a culvert running underneath the there for the water to flow okay then what I think we want to do is we want to level now with here Kind of messed up the road a little bit there, but not not too bad actually. Okay, that doesn't look too bad right there. Let's um let's reduce the size of this, and um, I think I want to go to softening here, and we're gonna need to. I want to fix this, so let's go down another size. Just don't want that seam right there because it's not very realistic. That's going to be a bit of a bump, but I think we could live with it. Why don't we do this? Raise up a little more back this way too, and then we'll smooth that down a little bit. That's not too bad. I mean, yeah, there's still a little tiny bit of a seam there. There. Okay, yeah, that works for here. That should work for here. Okay, and then let's go over to this area. And what we want to do here is... Um... I'm going to raise this up a little more here, so it's a little more gradual. Oh, crap. Ugh, I just messed up my crops. <laughs> Dang it. Um, all right. Next time we do some plowing, I'll have to fix that. Uh, let's switch this over to the square and make it a little small. Oh, I guess that's all the smaller it's going to go. I think we want to go smoothie now anyway. So there's just going to be a little bit of a an angle getting up into there, but that's okay. I don't think that's a problem. I kind of you know, I, I drive up here, too, so let's smooth this down a little more, too, so it's not quite so intense. Oops. Um, all right. I think that'll probably be okay. And yeah, we're going to store our animal care equipment in here, in the shed. All right. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, you know what we could do here is we could at least add some meadow grass back until I can fix it later. Right. 
That's good enough. So there's something there. Okay, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's uh, a good setup. Now, again, I would have held this back further, but we need to make leave enough room for chickens, uh, for two chicken coops, potentially, um, that will go this direction. So we would put the first one probably right about here. And then the second one would go right about here-ish. And there's still, you know, enough room to do that. I guess I could have held that back a little further, huh? But I don't know if I did have enough money to put this in. I don't know, you know, where it starts to consider it overlapping. You know what we could do? Just as an ex whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Well, here. Uh, just as an experiment. So we have twenty-six thousand three hundred seventy-seven dollars. I'm just gonna add um a million dollars temporarily we're not going to actually spend this money okay and then let's go back over here for a second where are we at um here now if we go to animals and chickens and um so I would probably start it right there. See, yes, it, it says it's over. Oh, nope. Okay, I think it's overlapping with this one. Okay, yeah, that'll work. All right, let's quickly sell these. Good, okay. That'll work. Just what the doctor ordered. Very cool. Okay, now let's go back to here and uh, remove a million dollars. And that puts us back to 25,788. What? Didn't we have 26 something? I don't know, whatever. Boss doing experiments. Okay, so I think we are in good shape. So we got this all leveled out over here. We still have a bit of a bump here, but it's actually not as bad as it was before. We could, actually, you know, we could, here, I'll tell you what, I want to do this. Let's go back into here for a second. And back to landscaping and sculpting. I want to raise this up just a little bit more, more because it's such a, an abrupt angle. Make it a little more gradual coming into here. All right, and then let's just soften on that. Okay, now let's look at it. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. All right, cool. So now we have some more sheds to store stuff. So I think the first thing we're going to do is let's hop into here and um, I want to kind of do this based upon frequency of use. So we we generally only use the curtain cider one, one time a year when we're selling all of our stuff. This isn't a frequently used implement. So that means I want to kind of put this way over off to the side here all right that's um it's pretty straight actually I think and it's all the way well, almost all the way back now I put Put my header trailer over here. I don't I I don't even really use this actually. I bought it, you know, because is there any secrets underneath here? <laughs> or collectibles? Uh, we've been living here forever and I've never even looked. Uh, anyway, um I bought this for our header, but 
I can generally just, you know, make my way to wherever I need to go with it. So I'm almost wondering if we should just sell the thing. Uh, how much would we get for it if we sold it? Um, no, we want to go here. That's what's in the sales. Better trader. Uh, I'm not that much money, really. Okay, well, what I'm going to do then is um, you could definitely grab this in real life and pull it to where you needed it to go. Um, so I'm going to do that ish. <laughs> it's such a pain in the butt to try and drive. Oh, well, okay. I don't know if that would happen in real life. And I'm going to put this on the other side of the curtain, curtain side. This is where this will live. Unless I decide to sell it at some point. I mean, we're not going to get that much money out of it. We might as well just keep it. Because you never know. I might actually want it at some point. Let's move the tongue over to the side. So that takes care of those things. Now, what we frequently use is the water tank and even the flatbed trailer we use that quite a bit so what I'm gonna do with those is I'm gonna put them on the other end the the near ends because they're gonna be where they're a lot more accessible for us yeah I really like this trailer it is a nice piece of equipment um, in, in fact it looks like it's probably gonna be too long for this shed um, maybe what we'll do is this then. Oh, yep, we're in the back. Okay. Yeah, it does. It does stick out a lot, doesn't it? It's just really long. Yeah, let's just. We're just gonna have to go with that for now. That's, you know, partly why I wanted that longer shed, but it's all right. It is what it is. At least the majority of it's undercover now. And, you know, as some of you, or maybe all of you, probably know, you don't actually have to put these things undercover like you would in real life, but, you know, it just seems like the right thing to do, you know what I mean? So that's why we do it. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's next? Uh, we have the we have the Brantner, and we have. Well, we're gonna take. We're definitely taking the silage extractor over to the other barn because that's for animal care. So let's move that right now. Here's what actually here's what we're gonna do with the truck. So we're going to hook up to the cultivator since we need the truck to run the cultivator or operate it. And hopefully we can park both of these in the shed together and have enough room to to get the truck all the way in. It's gonna be mm, I don't know, it's gonna be close, we'll see. And we can put that right on the edge so it's easily accessible oh yeah we're good man we're good okay so this is where we'll park the truck and the cultivator not a whole lot of room left there huh it's for the most part undercover <laughs> okay mm -hmm. looking good okay 
And now what we're gonna do is let's let's move the combine over. We don't uh, use the combine real often, but we do usually use it a couple times a year. Well, does that get? Oh man, the stupid camera! Is that actually getting the header? It's not really getting the header under cover though. You know, honestly, I like the idea of moving the reefer over to this bay. Let's do it. And putting the combine all the way on the end. Now, that actually leaves us a narrow spot there. What could we potentially put in there? Something that we don't use very often. I don't really use the windrower. In fact, we might never ever use the windrower again. Now that we have, you know, that fancy schmancy new rake. So why don't we do this? We do use the, the tether on occasion. But this, we just don't really need it. In fact, I wonder if we should... Well, I don't want to sell it. I want to have one just in case. And again, there's no way you could lift this in real life, but you could probably pick it up and, and drag it. So we're just going to do it this way. There we go. Okay. And we'll pull it forward just a little bit too, because like I said, we do have to get to it every once in a while. Okay, good. I like that. That's a pretty good setup there. Now we should be able to put the combine. Why am I wasting fuel? What does it matter with me? Okay, we should be able to put the combine in there now. That's about as far back as we can go without hitting anything. That doesn't count. There we go. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Looking good, man. Looking good. Okay, so um, let's see. This, I haven't decided what to do with this Russell Mosh Cultivator. The reason I'm hanging on to it is because I could put a second tractor on this to work if, you know, if we take a whole bunch of cultivator contracts. What I might do, though, is I might pull this baler out of here and put it next to the other baler. Uh, if it'll fit, though. it's a That thing's pretty big. It's a pretty wide baler. I don't... Uh, yeah, I could probably make them fit. And then the Rossel Mush. These we only use on occasion. These we only use on occasion. And yes, you could very easily pull that in real life. Um, why don't we do this? Let's drag that back this way a little bit. And we'll put we'll put all these in the back like so. Okay. You'd have to have a pretty pretty doggone strong back, I think, to pull that thing in real life. I mean, you could, but yeah. Let's use the tractor on that one. We've got to be somewhat realistic here. Okay, so like I said, I use these rollers all the time. Every time we harvest our own hay, we use them. Plus, you know, we use them too when we create new fields. So we want them to be easily accessible. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to put both of them in this bay here. Okay, 
That should be good for this. Let's go grab the other one and put it right next to it. I think we'll just store the Brantner out at the other barn. Well, we might have to... We might have to store the rake out there too. I don't know. We'll see. And now this little bay here, like I said, will be the new parking spot for the McCormick. We might be able to actually put the hay rake uh, next to the field repair unit. There we go. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's put the hay rake. I think it'll fit. It's kind of high. All right, yeah, so this will be the new home for the rake. We actually we could put even something in behind there. I, I've got the... I don't really ever use the front loader anymore. Uh, or the... In fact, we can sell those long forks. I've never... I used those once, and they made everything really unstable. It's this... Yeah, we don't need this. Let's sell it. It's a nice idea, but it makes the pallets way too unstable. So the front loader attachment and the forks, we do want to keep that, but I don't think we can I don't think we can fit that stuff under here. Um We can we could fit the weights under there. Well, actually, can we put that under there? Let's just try and see what happens. Yeah, that works. Oh, very nice. Okay. Perfect. Perfecto. Honestly, I'm not really too worried about those weights. I'm just going to leave them where they are. They're painted, so they get a little wet once in a while. Not a big deal. All right. Let's see. So I think we're going to move the telehandler. Um, over to the other barn, and we still have a lot of room at that other barn too. And we're gonna also put the Brantner over there. So let's let's take the Brantner over there first. I'm also gonna take the mixer and and the straw chopper out of the barn, and store them in here. Put that there. Let's go get the chopper in the mixer wagon and bring that over. Very good. Okay, so um, we want to bring the telehandler over here, and I might, like I said, I might move the baler into the next to the other one, and then we can put the forklift back in the barn in its original place where we used to park it a long time ago. I don't really use the forklift very much anymore either, but I don't want to get rid of it because it's a pretty useful implement to have. Okay, I'm just going to drop this off here for the moment because we have to go pick up the other attachments and bring them over here too.
There's the telehandler's new home. It's looking good, man. Coming together. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the last two things I think that we want to do is... I'm going to... I'll just leave that open. We might close it in the winter. Keep the cows warm. Um, figure out where we're going to put the forklift and... Um... What was the second thing? <laughs> I can't remember now. There was two more things I wanted to do. Oh, excuse me. Oh, uh, move the baler over to the other one. This one's a little bit easier to get get to. And, you know, we certainly could... We could put the forklift down here. Seem, especially since we almost never use it anymore. Kind of makes sense. In fact, we could even put this down there, too. Yeah. I, I think we'll leave the Rossel Mosh just where it, right where it is. That, that works. Okay. Let's get this guy. Uh, I do know we have, we have the flatbed trailer there, too, but that thing... I can't use the tongue lock thingamadoodle with it. It's such a pain in the butt to back up. That I think we're just going to keep that outside. Not worry too much about it. Okay. That is now the new home for the forklift, if I could get out. It's a pretty good spot for it, I think. And now we're going to put the baler over next to the other baler. I mean, this isn't a bad spot for the baler. The problem, though, is that I have a hard time getting off the tractor to hook it up with the, you know, with the doors in the way, like here. Here, here it's not too bad, but if I get it a little further in there, then it can be a pain in the neck. And we use both of our balers very frequently, so... It just kind of makes sense to put them in a really easily accessible spot. That's tight, but it works. <laughs> nice. I could move the Pottinger over just a smidge too, uh, but it's good the way it is. All right, guys, I think that's it. I think we have done a fantastic job, if you don't mind my saying so, of organizing our farm. It looks much better now. Much, much, much better. That trailer can stay right where it is. I suppose what we could do is we could pull the farm tech in forward and then back this one in afterwards we wanted to. Yeah, what the heck, let's do it. I was looking, <clears throat> I, I could have, I could have sworn that, um, well, you know what we're going to do too? We're going to back this in from the other end because it's going to be easier. At some point I was looking on Mod Hub and I found this Elm Street barn, but with a working silo. But I couldn't find it again. I was looking all over for it, <clears throat> and uh, I couldn't find it. So I don't know if I was imagining things, or did we not hook up our lines? Huh, that was weird. Okay. But I couldn't find it. So yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. Either I imagined it, which is possible, or. The mod author took it off the mod hub for some reason. Um, because I was I, I was planning on replacing this barn with that barn on the working silo. But, yeah, anyway. If if that doesn't work, then I, ha I have another silo plan. I, I want to eventually get my own silo. I mean, you just, you know, we're a farmer. We've got to have our own silo, right? But the train station, <laughs> the train station works so well, and it's so cheap. 
that it's just, you know, kind of made sense. Oh, you know what? I have to kind of lift this up to get it to... Now, there is this silo that we're looking at that doesn't actually work. There is an actual working version of it, but the problem is if I put it in, I'd have to put it next to that, and then we're blocking our, our roadway there. So I don't think we'll do that. I have two poss other possibilities when silo time comes. Um, but yeah, we'll just we'll just wait on that for now. We don't have a lot of grain and stuff that we're storing at this point in time, so it still just makes sense for us to stick with the train station for now. Ideally, we want to get the tongue and everything inside. Or at least it's close as possible. Uh, how much space do we have? Like none. <laughs> okay, that was like the absolute limit that I could put it in there without bumping into the other one. But that works. I like it. That works. Okay, look at this nice and neat organized farm, you guys. Isn't this awesome? I love it. Fantastic. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's park the New Holland, and we are finished with July. Turn that off. Um, let's go to July third before I let you go, just so we can actually get to the end of the month. Okay, welcome to July 3rd. Let's look and see what the sales have. Ooh. This is basically the same thing that we have now, except for it has its own built-in uh, bale thingamadoodle. But it isn't any more capacity, and at this point, that would just be a luxury that we don't really need. That would be a very nice uh, implement to have, though. But, yeah. For the price, definitely can't afford that right now. But it's tempting. It is indeed tempting. Okay, so let's look at um, our ledger again. Oh, you know what? There, I do have to do a couple more things. Wait a minute. Did I just take... Oh, I finished those off camera, but I never turned them in. Okay, cool. So that gives us a little bit more money. Um, we need to pay our worker for moving pallets. And also, because I don't have a square bale pickup, I, I use the auto load feature on the flatbed trailer to pick up the straw bales and the hay bales. And I'm not doing that for free. So I'm basically paying uh, workers to help me with that, even though in reality there's no way they can lift up those bales. But we're just going to not get too serious about that. So we're going to give them an additional 500 bucks, 250 a piece uh, for helping us with that. So that means we need to take uh, $3,700 out uh, to pay the workers. Very good. Okay. So now this is our money at the end of July. We've already actually looked at this earlier in this episode. Um, sold buildings. Oh, did I put I must have put a couple of things down and then picked them back up really quick. And I, I may have done some of that on camera, some off camera, because I was messing with some stuff. Oh, yeah, it was it was the chicken. Was it? I don't remember. Anyway, I think that's what that's from. Um, we've looked at most of this stuff already. So, yeah, that's um, pause the screen if you want to if you want to study it. But we've pretty much already gone through this. Uh, it's just that we're two more days uh, past. So we are now sitting on 30,000 dollars of cold hard cash 237 um we have no uh debt so yeah we don't owe the bank anything for now until <laughs> until i take out another load and we're in pretty good shape we are in really good shape greenhouses are good we are going to need to get some seed in the greenhouses i will probably do that in august and also uh, I don't, we, yeah, we won't harvest our, hay, our own hay until September. And then we'll do the farmer, uh, the computer farmers in October, their, their third hay cutting. 
So August might be a fairly slow month. Um, and so because of that, I probably will not bring you back until the end of August, end of month update to start the next episode. Unless, of course, as always, I have a reason to bring you back before then. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a fun episode. Uh, we got we got a lot of good stuff done. It feels good to have the farm all nice and neat and tidy and organized. I love it. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video, and we will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.